Come on. Well, I have these full numbers, but I'm confused by them because they were taken at such a weird time. Oh, they were taken at a bizarre time. A volatile moment. Yeah, you know, the well, thing like, they don't let what's What's the point? I mean, you, you tell me how polling is done. Do they do it? They say, oh, just to make a let's point? pick this moment when the story is not finished and gauge. Oh, you don't think the story's I'm, finished? I'm, tell, I'm telling you. <laughs> the story's finished. I'm telling you. No, no. It's that, finished. So, so last week we were saying, why didn't anybody take polls after debates, right? They didn't. And they didn't for a long time. So this NBC News Wall Street Journal poll, we work here. We, th we love working well, here. Well, I just don't we get love the this place. They take the poll the second the crisis starts. Mm -hmm. But there's a debate And they scheduled. stop it. Right before the debate, it could not have been cooked more oh, to get the was, result they got. I don't know if it's cooked. I just I mean, no, no. I'm just saying think you no cook it by the, 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 the point you put it. It's just ridiculous. Say we're going to put this at the height of the scandal, and so they get a 14 point. But lead. there's a debate what, what schedule. You Wouldn't you wait until after? Yeah, would you do it after the debate? No, I think that I think they kept going. No, no, they didn't. Yeah, the they, no, no, no. It, it's okay, taken Mark, let me over help the you weekend. Out here. And <laughs> I, I, look, I looked at the fine print. It said they took it once the scandal started, but before the debate. Right, What's but that? I think they stayed in the field another day. I believe they did. Well, I'm just. But how does that? I, I'm just telling you. They they say they did not. They they finished before the debate. So they, they put out the data that didn't include the debate, but I believe they stayed in the field. You're saying we don't have the next data. So okay, so then these these numbers you basically are strange. These are str it's a but very strange good. timing. But uh, NBC <laughs> News Wall Street Journal poll taken over the weekend shows Hillary Clinton in the lead nationally among likely voters by 11 points, 46 to 35 in a four-way race with Gary Johnson at nine, Jill Stein at two. In a two-way race, the gap is even larger. Clinton ahead by 14 points, 52 percent to 38. That is a seven-point swing, my friends, in her direction. Among Clinton voters, 49 percent say they are more motivated, more motivated by support for Clinton, 44 percent against Trump, while 52 percent of Trump voters are motivated by opposition to Clinton, 37 percent support for Trump. When asked if the 11-year-old Access Hollywood recording of Trump should be an issue in the campaign, 52 percent of likely voters said yes, 42% said no. Okay, enough numbers. Uh, it, it, it just keeps going. When Republicans ask if they'd like to see a Martian one day eat uh, a lamb chop on the plains no, of East Bulgaria, 43% oh, like said yes. Yeah, just I like saw, I'm not a Republican, I, but I would. I, I definitely want to see that. Yeah. So 67% though said they wanted to support <laughs> Trump if oh. he were next to the lamb. Uh, so anyway, uh, let me ask you this, John Heilman. This this does matter as far as this latest blow up by Trump. Even if let's say things are level a week from now, it matters now because in Florida and other important states, voting has begun. So actually, this, uh, you know, this, now I get it. this ain't July where you could go, well, you know, he's got time. This, this matters because yeah. people are voting right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I mean, thank you. Yes. No, I mean, I, I, you mean it matters in terms of what, like taking the poll at that moment as capturing what's going on in terms of yes. voting happening? It, yes. it's, it's more than just a, we, we're at a point now where it's more than just a snapshot in time. It's more it's than just a happening. moment in time. People are voting yes, right now. Well, and, and look, and I, I don't have the objection that you guys have. I'm interested in seeing polls that, I'm interested in that sli snapshot of time, the poll that happens between the scandal and the debate. And I'm interested in knowing we're going to have plenty of polling that's going to show what the effect of the debate was. And so, right. I, you know, I, I'm happy to see a series of snapshots. We just didn't way. have one for 18 months before. <laughs> I exaggerate, for a week and a half uh, so, after a debate. Uh, yeah, so um, what, what, are you, what, are you, what do you think as far as this, this lead? What what are all the negative impacts what are, uh, that it's going to have on Trump from fundraising to early voting to organizing? Because I had a lot of people out last night cheering him on. But what's the long term impact? It always comes back to Haley Barber and his dictum in politics good gets better and bad gets worse. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stories out there about Hillary Clinton, the, the latest disclosures of these emails that would be negative stories. She's meeting with, she's campaigning with Al Gore. That could be covered in kind of a fraught negative way. Instead, he is just behind the eight ball now every day in every news cycle through the prism, not now of the tape, first of the video, and now of the polls. You know, I don't know if Haley Barber said it, but he should have said it. There's another dictum that I go by, which is, you're never as bad as they say you are, and you're never as yeah. good as you think That's you also are. Haley Barber, and they're, yeah. in, con and they're in conflict. 
yeah. those two expressions. But in this case, I think the one there I said are exceptions. Is holding. <laughs> but I, I actually, I think in this case, it's the second Haley Barber because you're going to see it. I believe. I could be totally wrong. I think you're going to see a bounce back of Trump. It's not going to be 14 points. It's just not. It's going to get tighter. And uh, no, but it, it could be seven points. But it won't be 14. Right. But so I mean, he needs, he needs a, he needs to change the dynamic of the race. Well, he is. Yeah, one, yes. one, one of the more interesting. He has. One of the more interesting questions that you could ask in a poll that has not been asked is the following question. Would you be happy or unhappy if the election were over today? Oh. And I suspect happy would win 80 to 90 percent of those polls because people are sick of both of these candidates and they're truly sick of this campaign. Yeah. He's, he's truly he's, he's sick. He's changed of the it. dynamic of the race, but in a way that, that is demonstrably not to his benefit. You know that for it's sure? Well, I mean, he's just, I mean, I was with him yesterday and wow. everything he's done. I know we are going to disagree about how he's performed in the debate on Sunday night, but I, I think everything he's done in the last 48 hours has been like he's just campaigning for 35 percent of America. Yeah. I mean, he's, well, he's running a base campaign right now to make to get people who love him already to shake their fists. Again, you, you, right. ha you have to yeah. you have he's, to look. You, we have to keep this in perspective on Friday and Saturday. Uh, he was a political equivalent of, of dead on arrival. Right. Like they found him in a ditch on the side of the road, and everybody said, he's not going to make it. Everyone was saying it. He's so. dead. Yeah. A doctor said, we can remake him. We can make it. Six million dollar man. Better, Nobody stronger, said, we're going to make it bad, fast, fast, out of that. No, but his campaign was dead. And he would not have survived until Monday if he had not. If it changed the dynamic, as you right. said. So. Right now, 35% for a man who was dead on Friday is not a bad right, place to a, start. It's a sugar, it's a but, sugar high. But it's, it's a sugar, sugar high. high. No, I, I, wanna, I know you don't understand. If you're about to die and your choice is, I could die or they could stick those things on my chest that really hurt, bzzz, I'm going to take that than being dead in the ditch. So, if of course, you've got to live to, he's fought to live another day. Now the question is, what does he do with it? He's, he's campaigning like a crazy person right now. He's campaigning and like a crazy person. From... He, walked out, he walked out yesterday in right. the, at the first event he did right. in Pittsburgh, outside Pittsburgh at Ambridge yesterday that I was at. He was the first rally he's done since the revelation of the tapes on Friday. Right. Okay. He walked out on stage and he spent the first five minutes of the event talking about how close he is to Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. Donald Trump has spent the last the golf the weekend. Story. He yeah. spent the last weekend being accused of condoning and boasting about sexual assault. Right. Came out on stage and talked about how close he is right. to be with someone who's been accused of sexual assault twice. Right. With a someone who's been accused of rape twice. Right. That's lunacy. Yeah. That's, and that's it's it's, from... it's, it's, it's lunacy. Well, well it's, not, it's, not, it's different from a lot of things. There's, how, how, no, there's no one at this table who would say that's a sensible thing for someone to do, to walk right. out, who's been accused well, of sexual assault, to walk by, out by and the way, boast about their closeness John, John to an Heilman. accused yeah, sexual John, assault John, John Heilman. Heilman. perpetrator. Yeah. It's nuts. Well, a lot of things but that he has shocked. done, a lot of things he has done over the past year and a half have been nuts. Yes, well. Yep. I mean, and and, and I'll, I'll he, he won the Republican nomination. His campaign was over on Friday. It's not over now, and I want, I want to talk to my friends in romper room land. I can see you all with my mirror here, and I want to make sure before you start tweeting really stupid things, right, it's, that it's will make my started. teeth hurt, yeah. <laughs> Too late. that you will understand that I'm not condoning any of this. No. I'm saying he had a choice. Does his campaign die, or does his campaign live? And he chose to keep his campaign alive. Now, that's morally repugnant to you. His very existence as Jack Nicholson would say at the end of A Few Good Men, is morally repugnant to you. But politically, the decision was made. I am not going to quit this race. And that's where Donald Trump is right now. Now, I, su I suspect he lives to survive to the end of the campaign, and maybe he lives to survive with a very hardcore 38% of the vote. So but he would rather do that than be out of the race in early October. The, the, the depressing thing is, is, I disagree with you, I do think his campaign is over. It will continue. It will continue. Well, yeah. But the reason that it will continue is Hillary Clinton. Because you just never know from day to day, I mean the release of these WikiLeaks emails, there's always something there. 
about about the Clinton campaign and about the candidate herself. Yeah. In addition to the fact that the other evening during the debate, the combined verbiage from both of them didn't elicit one inspirational feeling in American voters. Exactly. And pe that's what people are looking for in a candidate for president of the United States, and it's not been there. So Donald Trump was in Pennsylvania yesterday, and maybe he did it there. Mm, not really. He made it clear he had no intention of backing off the pressure that he's been applying on Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton. I was getting beaten up for 72 hours on all the networks for inappropriate words from 12 years ago, locker room talk, whatever you want to call it. But I said to myself, wait a minute, and I just saw very inappropriate words, but Bill Clinton sexually assaulted innocent women, and Hillary Clinton attacked those women viciously. If they want to release more tapes, saying inappropriate things, we'll continue to talk about Bill and Hillary Clinton doing inappropriate things. As I outlined last night, Bill Clinton was the worst abuser of women ever to sit in the Oval Office. He was a predator. Hillary Clinton systematically attacked and discredited the victims of Bill Clinton's sexual harassment and assault. These things aren't written by the media, but they're true. For decades, Hillary Clinton has been deeply familiar with her husband's predatory behavior. And instead of trying to stop it, she made it possible for him to take advantage of even more women. She put even more women in harm's way. And then she goes out and says, oh, I love women. I'm going to help women. I'm going to help women. She's a total hypocrite. The hypocrisy of the media and our politicians is hard to believe. <sighs> so this was this was all a prompter. It was kind of amazing. He, he waited until the after starting with his Ben Roethlisberger PN. Right. He then waited till the very end of the speech and then went to prompter and read in a much more detailed way than he even had done on Sunday night when he brought out those four women and did on the right. stage. He had an incredible litany of where he listed not just those four women but mm -hmm. a long list of everybody that he that right. you know, had that negative association. Of his, where Bill, Bill Clinton Bill had Clinton. sexually abused and or in his framing that, that, and, Bill, that Bill Clinton uh, was, was like a Allegedly sexually well, abused. And that, and that he, that his, you know, his framing is Clinton is predator. Um, right. He called it the devil. He encouraged everyone to chant "lock her up." He, you know, um, it was a, I mean, it was, it was a, the reddest of red meat speeches. So you're saying this speech it's probably wouldn't primary. help in the suburbs of Philly. Yeah, I'm just saying it's not, it's not a speech designed in not, any way to, like in any way to talk to every, any voter that doesn't already love him. I mean, yeah. it was just, it was just a purely. Oh. So, so, but, but again, I, I hate to try to attach rational political thought to what seems to be irrational to all of us in polite society. But Mark Alpern, what did the RNC do yesterday? We're behind him all the way. We're backing him up Ryan, all the way. Reince Priebus made his decision long ago and is sticking with well, it. Well, but, but Reince but, was, Reince, I don't know that Reince was as solid on Friday night well, no, as he was no, on Monday. Nobody was on Friday well, exactly. night. Exactly. Mike Pence was on Friday night. That's the point. Yeah. But, Mike Pence yesterday, he's behind him. Right. But but there are now Republicans worried about losing the House because oh, of a strategy. He should be a strategy of winning a third of the vote at the presidential level. Is, I just is, when do we start talking about what happens to the Republican Party? That's well, what I'm. And, and who I thinks? I mean, again, yeah, the, the most extraordinary thing yesterday, I think, was the point, point you make is Ryan's previous went one way, and Paul Ryan went the other way. Well, he, no, Paul's still endorsing him. Yes, but I mean, he's still endorsing him. How he, could he? He effectively he's still endorsing him. I, I understand. I trust me. I understand that. Paul but, Ryan's endorsing, by the way. For those of yes. you that don't know, Paul Ryan is endorsing Donald Trump. Well, I don't know if you got that word. But Paul still, still holding up the possibility he'll withdraw it. Well, really? Like when? Like yeah. yeah. What? When the missiles are flying? What's it going to take? So, but, but, but yet, still stood up in front of his members and said. Um, I will not defend him. I will not campaign with him. Right. I will not say anything more about him. And all of you are free to do whatever you want. Right. Please, t shave your own skins now. Th this is the moment that we reached two weeks out in 1996 with Bob Dole, where the, the highest ranked Republican in the country turned to his membership and said, yeah. feel free to do whatever you need to do because the presidential race is over. What is incredible, Mike Barnacle, is just oh, 10 days ago, uh, we were talking about how the Republicans looked like they had a shot, probably a 50-50 shot, of holding on to the Senate. Nobody's saying that this morning. Uh, and now you are starting to hear serious talk about the Democrats having a shot at actually taking over the House.
that would be extraordinary. And look at the preference for control of Congress. The Democrats at 49 percent, Republicans at 42 percent. Guess when the numbers were that bad, Mike? Do you know the last time the numbers were that bad for Republicans? In the middle of Ted Cruz's government uh, shutdown. The House, the, the idea that the House would go Democratic is truly shocking. I mean, and it gives it gives voice to the to the depth of what Trump has done to the Republican Party in this campaign. Which, again, the the, the question that I just posed: What happens to that party after election? Well, day? let's see. It's October the 11th. Everybody's talking about like the elections today. Let's see what it looks like on October the 18th. And if Trump's closer, then a lot of these weasels that have slipped away from him in the Republican Party will come right back. That's been their biggest problem all along. They've been weasels. Right. Where they, they, if Trump, if Trump looks popular for their people, they support him, and when it looks a little less popular, they, 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 they run away. We'll see if they run back. But you have the Speaker of the House, the most powerful elected Republican official in the country, basically saying, "Hey, you guys are on your own. Do what you have to do." Yeah. And Paul Ryan's not a stupid man. He knew when he got on that call yesterday and said this that he would take, take a huge backlash from right. the base of the party, from a lot of other Republican members of the House. Right. But he is, he is now going to be the leader of saying to people. Hillary Clinton's going to be president. Yes. The Republicans are going to lose control of the Senate. <clears throat> the one thing you can do if you care about stopping Hillary Clinton's policy agenda right. is keep me a Speaker of the House, keep Republicans the majority. And, and, this, a is risk. Not, and this is not a position me, of instinct yeah. either. This is a position that's informed by all the polling that Republicans are looking at and on the House side. Ryan is looking at this and saying, you know, the, our, we, we have lost the presidential race and our, our majority in the, in the House is in jeopardy. This is the only choice I have right now on the basis of the numbers, not just these public yeah. polls, but everything that the party's seeing right now. So, Mika, what do you Think? Why wouldn't he just pull his endorsement? What is he clinging to? He's trying to minimize the drama of, um, of, of what would happen if he did that. But he hasn't ruled out on endorsing him. I know you're saying, what is he waiting for? What else could it be? Yeah. He's trying. I mean, what, what's he, he's using his judgment. What's the best way to keep one chamber in conservative control to stop, an, uh, to stop Speaker Pelosi right. and Majority Leader Schumer and President Clinton from passing a liberal right, agenda. So I need to ask and he's you not guys, trying to, he's Alex, trying to not provoke the, the Trump the Trump base either. Yeah. He feels like by by disendorsing Trump, he would anger a large part of the party above the party's faithful, above the party. Uh, hurt a lot of members. I don't members. think you could have yeah, the both ways in a situation. So like this. Uh, apparently, some are. 